Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Monster Creek Mushrooms. And really quick, before we started this video, just wanted to make a quick announcement. The Monster Creek Mushrooms t-shirts, the Mother of Mushroom shirts, they're going on the website today. They'll be on there later on this evening, so be on the lookout for that. As soon as they're online, go ahead and order, pick out your size, and we ship your t-shirt to you within a couple of weeks. Um, these shirts, oh my gosh guys, these shirts are so soft. Like. They're way softer than the ones we were working with before. They are short sleeve, which I, I noticed a lot of people were talking about. They prefer the short sleeve over the long sleeve. We'll offer the long sleeve later. And these are just so much softer than the last run we were working with. And that's what's taking us so long getting these to you guys is that we want to make sure that when we sold you a shirt, it was a comfortable shirt with a good quality print, especially just to show that artwork of the, the mother of mushrooms done by Joe Killian. Uh, also, guys, we've talked to our potter. And he said that the Monster Creek Mushrooms mugs, like the, the Reishi mugs, those are about two weeks away. So we're getting ready to have those. Be on the lookout for those on the website. And with that, guys, we'll start that video. And as always, remember, keep spawning culture, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Monster Creek Mushrooms. And today is sectoring day. Sectoring is whenever you're trying to isolate a culture from other cultures around it. So, for example, I have taken a spore print and have taken the spores and put them on agar and hatched them out. As they germinate and grow together, we then subculture those out into uh, isolates. Though, I will say that, let me turn you around here, I have a nice stack of dishes here. And that stack of dishes each one of those dishes in this stack contains anywhere from one to five strains of a new oyster mushroom variety. A strain would be a, a unique strain, as in a unique genotype. Um, a simpler way of saying that would be, you know, each one of these dishes has one, two, five brothers and sisters in this. That's an oversimplification, but. <clears throat> For example, if I take, let me find one, it's got clear sectors. You can see here that there are different types of growth on the dish. Each one of those different types of growth would, we will subculture out and it will be considered an isolate. I'm actually running a little bit late on these. Um, mainly because I've got a lot of breeding projects going on. Each one of those dishes will need to be subcultured out, which means one to five new strains coming off each plate. We have about 30 plates there, so that means I could have anywhere up to 150 new strains that I have to grow out all the way from agar to grain master to grain bag to fruiting block and then the fruiting block will tell me what the phenotype, what the physical expression of genes is for each strain. That's a lot of work. So there are uh, some ways that you can speed up the process a little bit. I'm not going to go over those right now because it's mainly just, you know, we're just trying to get over the basics here. But uh, yeah, let's get to subculturing.
Well guys, that's about all I'm going to do for now. I've done about 75 sectors. Uh, I also did some cleanup work on some cultures that I've, I almost lost a while back. Uh, come to find out, I've not lost any of the cultures I thought I did, thanks to uh, the water agar trick that uh, I learned from City Over Singleton and uh, Alan Rockefeller. It's just uh, water and agar, no nutrients, no malt, no anything else. and. It, it worked like a charm. I've not had any bacterial contamination from my transfers, no mold, no nothing. Everything's perfectly clean. Uh, and what happened was my long-term backups got cracked in the, uh, in the storage and I threw my active culture plates away. When I went back to my backups to restart, found the cracked seals and so a lot of dishes were dried out or contaminated. So. Most of my cultures, thankfully, were kept, had backups kept off site, and those were shipped to me through various sources, and everything came out fine. But one culture that had significant sentimental value to me, the NNG oyster, uh, almost was lost. It is not lost, it is growing strong and healthy, and will be back in production very soon. And uh, yeah, so we'll have that. But for now, we have 75 new strings to trial and run, uh, not to mention that I still have dishes to sector out. I have experiments that are directly behind you uh, in the, here in the shelving on the lab that are some more strains that I'm playing with to create more and uh, to create more phenotypes. I want to see what we can kind of play with in the mushroom world. If we can get the same variety of mushrooms that we have of tomatoes. So watch out guys, there's a lot of cultures coming in soon. Um, I'm only going to post the ones on the website that are doing well in the grow room. Anything that I won't use personally, I won't sell on the website. So if you guys ask for any recommendations, the, anything on the website will be good. If you're specifically asking for something cool weather or warm weather, you know, I can, I can answer that for you. But uh, also the strain listing should have a lot of information on them. So with that guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and uh, check out the description for all kinds of codes that you can use for discounts and free stuff. And as always, keep spawning culture, y'all.